This week is the early decision deadline for students applying to hundreds of colleges across the country. But it's the first deadline since the Supreme Court wrongly struck down affirmative action policies at colleges and universities last summer. In June of this year, the Supreme Court struck down race-conscious admissions policies here at Harvard. The logic behind the judicial challenge to affirmative action was based on the fundamental misunderstanding of the college admissions process. The myth that qualified white people and other sympathetic groups are being denied admission for unqualified black people to take their spots. The first truth is that almost nobody is guaranteed admission to a top college. Black or white, Asian or Latino, admissions decisions are based on the needs of the institution in any given year. As a black kid from Clearwater, Florida, who took AP courses, was a published writer, political activist, student government president, and successful varsity athlete applying to college in the 1980s, I thought I had a strong case for admission. But I didn't get in everywhere I applied. If there had been 10 other black kids like me from Central Florida applied to my college that year, I might not have been admitted. Colleges look at a range of admissions factors and try to balance those qualities so that each incoming class brings a diverse perspective to the campus. The second truth is that test scores and grades don't tell the whole story. Here at Harvard, half of all students with perfect test scores are not admitted. Even if you have perfect test scores and perfect grades, that doesn't guarantee you admission especially if there's dozens of other applicants with similar files. Schools don't just want SAT clones. They want artists, athletes, leaders, thinkers, scientists, musicians, and activists, and people from different states with different religions, races, and backgrounds. SAT scores are closely correlated to family income. Test scores don't measure raw intelligence, artistic or athletic ability, tenacity, honesty, courage, or other non-academic abilities important for success in life. The third truth is that colleges aren't choosing unqualified candidates or over qualified ones. Instead, they have a huge pool of qualified candidates from which to choose. Here at Dartmouth College in New Hampshire, the school receives nearly 30,000 applications a year for just over 1,100 spots. The vast majority of students who apply here are qualified, so the school has to make very tough decisions about who to admit. That's the balancing act of admissions. If you're a good student from Alaska applying to college here at Columbia University in New York City, for example, you might have an advantage over a student with better test scores from next door New Jersey. That's because top schools value geographical diversity. They don't want a thousand students from the same prep school in the same town in the same state. That's why schools reserve spots for athletes, artists, musicians, people with unusual backgrounds, legacies, and people from wealthy families. And this rarely gets challenged in court. But simply the mention of race causes concern for many white Americans. They try to hide behind the language of meritocracy, but America has never been a meritocracy. Talented and capable black people, women, and people of color were systematically excluded from educational opportunities for hundreds of years, while mediocre white men were able to rule over them. That was affirmative action for white men, training 30% of the nation's population to lead nearly 90% of our leadership. But now that schools are finally taking action to remedy that racist legacy, suddenly it becomes a problem. That's because it's not about meritocracy, it's about anti-blackness.